Hi, today I was discussing a clinical case of a patient with advanced HEC with my colleagues here at the conference. And I would like to discuss it with you as well. Is that okay? My name is Dr. Simon van Damme and I work at the University Hospital in Antwerp, Belgium, where I work as a digestive oncologist. Peter is 56 years old and came to the hospital with vague abdominal pain complaints and minor pain in his right shoulder. He underwent a CT scan at the hospital. Peter is a non-transplant patient, and we see HEC in a non sedated liver, hence we performed a biopsy, which confirmed moderately differentiated HEC. We see normal liver parenchyma with no fibrosis present. The lab results give us a MELT score of 9, and the patient had a child with A. After reviewing the imaging and the lab results, what would be your preferred first-line treatment option for Peter? I would also go for first-line IO because the guidelines suggest using first-line IO for patients with advanced disease whenever it is feasible, which means when there is no active autoimmune disease or when the patient did not underwent a liver transplant and has recurrent disease. Check out the recent guidelines and recommendations from the BCLC and ESMO and an overview of the safety and efficacy of first-line systemic treatment for patients with advanced HCC. Peter and I decided to start IO combination treatment. He is now on atezolizumab bevacizumab every three weeks with very good tolerance. His AFP levels decreased from 241 to 43. We perform a first scan after two months, which shows slow progression in the bone lesion on the seventh rib on the right side, while the disease in the liver seems stable. Importantly, the vasculature is slightly reducing in both the liver and the bone lesion, which is indicative for treatment response. After listening to these details and reviewing all the information on your screen, would you switch to second-line treatment? As Peter is tolerating treatment very well, and we only see slow progression, I would continue the current treatment. We decided to continue on IO treatment, and Peter was treated for 12 months. In total, he received 16 cycles of IO treatment with scans that showed stable disease in between. Peter is now back for his follow-up, and we have new images and lab results. His AFP levels are rising, he has a MELT score of 10, and the patient still has a child with A. Unfortunately, Peter now has progression. We can see appearance of new lung lesions. Therefore, we conclude that we now need to switch treatment. What second line treatment option would you recommend for Peter? The BCLC guideline indeed suggests to go for a clinical trial after progression under IO. When we talk about clinical trials, there are quite a few possibilities. We could, for instance, go for a novel immunotherapy combination, or we could go for a combination of TKI plus immunotherapy. However, unfortunately, not all patients are eligible for a clinical trial. If there is no clinical trial available, in my clinical practice, I would go for sorafenib. What we also know is that we need more real-world data on what to do after progression under IO treatment. We are now five months into the second line treatment of Peter. He's doing relatively well. Scans are stable. Thank you for taking the time to discuss this case with me. The key clinical takeaways of this interactive patient case are, first, IO-based treatments are the first choice for patients with advanced HEC without active autoimmune disease and without liver transplant. Secondly, in case of slow progression, continuing IO-based treatment should be considered for patients with HEC. And finally, research is ongoing to determine the best treatment options and sequencing after progression on IO-based treatments for patients with HEC.